Hello, my name is Susana Marquez and I am a bioinformatician at the Computational Immunology Lab of Steven Kleinstein at Yale University. I would like to start by thanking Dogger and the organizers of this event for the invitation to present our research and our open source software for the analysis of the adaptive immune response and the B-cell receptors that encode antibodies. This is an outline of the topics I will be covering. First, I will introduce the lab, then I will talk about uh, the software itself, giving uh, some biology context so you can understand what the role of the software is, and then I will show where Docker fits into the picture. The Kleinstein Lab is an uh, academic uh, computational immunology research group. It is led by Professor Steven Kleinstein. We are based in New Haven, Connecticut. This is on the east coast of the United States. The lab is part of the Department of Pathology of Yale School of Medicine. The members of the lab include research staff, postdocs, and students of diverse origins and backgrounds. And what is computational immunology? I did the least original thing and adapted a definition from Wikipedia. Computational immunology is the use of high-throughput genomic and bioinformatics approaches to represent immunological problems into computational problems, solve them using mathematical and computational approaches, and translate the results into immunologically meaningful interpretations. In our case, computational immunology means that we combine big data analysis and immunology domain expertise. Our interests include uh, developing uh, new computational methods and applying these methods to study human immune responses in two main areas, high-throughput B-cell receptor repertoire profiling and detection of immune signatures of human infection and vaccination uh, responses. Today I will focus on the B-cell receptor part. This is the part where incantation fits in. If you don't know right now what BCRs are, don't worry, I will talk about them in a few slides. On the left side of this slide, you have a word cloud that summarizes our domain expertise. These are the most common words extracted from abstracts of our publications in scientific journals. And unsurprisingly, you see words such as immune, repertoire, antibodies, sequencing, data, and analysis. We work a lot with high throughput sequencing data. This is presented, represented by the file in the center of the slide. And being a computational lab, we usually generate data through collaborations with experimental labs. For the computational method development and analysis part, in a typical day, the tools we use the most are R, Python, and Git to write code to, to preprocess, uh, clean, reformat, analyze, and present data. And the interpretation of results is something that we usually do in conversation with our collaborators. Most methods in the incantation suite have been developed as part of research projects with funding coming from grants. To conclude the introductions, uh, what is incantation? The incantation suite is a collection of R and Python packages that we have developed to preprocess and analyze VCR sequencing data. It is widely used with over 40,000 downloads per year. The suite is designed for bioinformatics programmers. It does not have a GUI. And it has been designed to be modular because it is meant to be flexible. We usually refer to incantation as a start to finish analytical ecosystem. The URL to the main portal is incantation.org and from there you can access to the dedicated websites and repositories for each of the packages. We also release documentation, template scripts, tutorials, and we ship version Docker containers with all tools and dependencies installed. The logo is this blue wizard, and you will notice the names of all the packages have a magical theme. In the next few slides, I will further explain the biological context in which incantation is used and the tools available. B-cells, VCRs, antibodies, and repertoires. We are constantly exposed to a diverse of diversity of uh, potential threats, bacteria, viruses, toxins, and the role of the immune system is to keep us safe. B-cells are central players in the adaptive immunity because they are able to bind to antigens, the potential threats, and once bound, proliferate and produce more B-cells that bind even better. The activity of B-cells depends on the expression of B-cell recept receptors on their surface. These receptors are the ones that bind to the antigens. In their secreted form, when they are not bound to the B-cell surface, they are known as antibodies. 
There are millions of B-cells in an adult, and each B-cell has a practically unique BCR that recognizes and binds to a particular set of antigens. That means that collectively, BCRs have a very diverse binding range. The collection of BCRs in an individual tissue or cell subset is referred to as the repertoire. And studying repertoires is interesting because they cover information about the current and past immune states of the individual, and a repertoire could help predict how we might react to a future threat. I told you each B cell has a practically unique BCR, and this uniqueness comes from different sources, starting with the particular germline alleles and individual queries, the starting genomic information. BCRs are not encoded in one long piece of genetic code in the genome, that would be expensive. BCRs are encoded in different uh, gene segments that can be combined and joined in multiple ways during a process called BDJ recombination. During this process, uh, one B, D, and J gene are joined, and where they are glued together, there is some additional variability added in the form of untemplated nucleotides that were not present in their germlines. The most variable part is the junction, and in the final VCR or antibody, in the folded three-dimensional protein, this part is critical for antigen binding, and that is why uh, many analyses focus on this sequence. This diversity is further increased during uh, immune responses. When these cells that bind to antigens become activated, uh, proliferate, and undergo a process called somatic hypermutation that changes the DNA that encodes for the BCR. SHM is a key driver of the affinity uh, maturation of the BCR receptor. Through rounds of mutation and proliferation, cells that are better at recognizing the antigen are preferentially expanded. The BCR sequences provide a record of this process. And identifying and analyzing the lineages that define these clonal expansions can provide a biological insight. So studying BCRs and being able to identify these groups of B cells that belong to the same lineage because they originate from the same ancestor cell gives us a lot of information. It can be used to identify signatures of immune responses, study antibody development, and guide the development of vaccines and antibody therapies, for example. What kind of data we need for, to do this? We use ERSIC, that stands for Adaptive Immune Receptor Repertoire Sequencing, which involves determining the nucleotide sequence of the BCRs for all of the B cells in a sample. This can also be done at the single cell resolution, in which case we also get the gene expression state of each cell. These experiments produce huge files with the nucleotide sequences uh, identified in the sample. In real life, how does this work in our lab? Well, we work with experimental collaborators that are experts in their fields and have access to biological samples. They usually suspect from previous research that the disease or event they are interested in has an adaptive immune component. The type of questions we want to answer with incantation are geared toward increasing our understanding of the role of BCRs in the immune response. We have extensive experience in projects focused on autoimmunity, viral or bacterial infection, and in the evaluation of the response to vaccination. A common source uh, of biological material is the blood, but depending on the particular disease or the particular questions, samples can come from other tissues, including lymph nodes, skin, bone marrow, or cerebrospinal fluid. Usually, our experimental uh, collaborators isolate and prepare the samples, and then we send them to a sequencing facility where they are sequenced, and then we receive huge files with the sequencing outputs that we call raw reads. Starting from the raw FASQ files, Presto performs multiple steps of processing to produce high-quality, full-length BCR sequences. Presto generates output that can be run through standard BDJ assignment software like uh, IGMGT HiveQuest or IGBlast. These tools will identify the BDJ genes in the, in the nucleotide sequence and the boundaries of different regions of the VCR sequence. Change is then used to standardize the output of this gene assignment and prepare a tabulated file for downstream analysis. This tabulated file follows the R community standard format for uh, repertoire data. 
Besides additional quality controls and filters, there are many possible uh, downstream analyses that can be performed with incantation, and in the next few slides I will highlight just some of them. The step of identifying the VDJ genes correctly is, is very important, um, and it is done by matching the sequence, uh, sequences against a database of known VDJ genes. However, current databases are incomplete and some assignments might, uh, might also occur to genes which are not carried by the individual due to errors or ambiguities, for example. The Tigger R package contains methods to infer subject-specific genotypes, including novel alleles, and then uses these results to improve the gene annotations. Clonal expansions. Incantation provides multiple methods to infer clonal relationships. The most well, uh, widely used method is to use single linkage hierarchical clustering and then cut the resulting tree at a defined fixed distance. First, we group sequences based on shared V and J gene assignments and having a common junction length. Clustering within these groups is based on the Hamming distance between the junction nucleotide sequence. To define a distance threshold to separate sequences into discrete clones, the R package as a sum provides the functions this to nearest and find threshold. Once a distance threshold uh, is decided, the command line tool defined clones by from Chenjo or the R package as Cooper can perform uh, the clonal assignment. The VDJ germline assignment is then improved by assigning a, a single germline sequences uh, for each uh, clone. These germlines will be used later in downstream analysis to infer the chain and reconstruct uh, lineages. The R package Alakazam provides functions to analyze and visualize the repertoire's diversity and other features, such as biases in gene usage. We know that not all BD and J genes are used uh, with the same frequency. And the function, the function amino acid properties in Alakazam can be used to calculate several amino acid sequence physical chemical properties of the junction region. Uh, remember that this is the most variable region of the antibody sequence and its properties are key contributors to antigen specificity. b cell repertoires can also differ in the number of mutations introduced during uh, SHM, during somatic hypermutation, and Shazam provides methods focused on the analysis of uh, this, uh, this um, SHM patterns, including the reconstruction of SHM targeting models and quantification of selection pressure. These repertoires often consist of hundreds to thousands of uh, separate clones. Each clonal lineage recapitulates the ancestor-descendant relationships between the vessels in the lineage, and uncovering these relationships can provide insights into affinity maturation. And the Alakazam and Dowser art packages provide methods to build and analyze lineage trees. And how do we use Docker? We find Docker very useful in several ways. First, in the development and maintenance of the framework, we use containers for unit testing and integration tests to be sure updates in the code don't break things. We also use Docker in our data analysis projects uh, for better reproducibility of the results. Finally, we have uh, conducted several training sessions where the participants used our Docker images uh, to run example analysis, and our users uh, like Docker because they don't have to install our packages independently, and also it allows us to package the code along with template scripts and example data. Incantation.org is the URL of the main portal for the project, and you will find there tutorials, documentation, and links to the dedicated sites um, for each of the packages. You will also find there instructions to pull and use the Incantation Suite containers, and all links are you can find them in the menu on the on the left. You can see the tutorials. There is a Docker session. You have the links of all the packages. If you want to learn more about Incantation, visit incantation.org. If you have questions, you can send us an email at incantation at uh, googlegroups.com. You can follow Steve Kleinstein's Twitter account to stay up to date with Incantation news, publications, and job openings. And with this, I will just thank all Kleinstein Lab members, uh, past and present, that have contributed to the development of the framework. Thank you again to Docker and the organizers of this meeting, and of course, thank you to our funders, NIH and the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. Thank you. <laughs>